Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Brother Zen, are you there? I am, brother. It's Hallelujah. always an honor to be with you and family. So. Oh, amen. Praise God. Now, folks, and, and uh, I brought my, uh, Zen's mic live. Um, we got uh, Brother Kenneth, of course, live. And uh, we're now going to go into the Archons and Akash and Holy Watchers part of this radio show. Now, praise Jesus. Now, um, there's a, a lot of information that we're going to put out tonight, and we're going to discuss in a roundtable style discussion with commentary. Um, we probably, um, well, certainly will not be able to cover every single item that is included in the show notes. If you want to get a copy of the show notes and follow along or, or have notes that you can do your own research, uh, then you can go to tribulation now.net. Um, Brother Lee uh, does that website for us. It's a sister site, and um, there you can get access to the show notes there, and uh, you'll have uh, all these different topics. You'll have ten times more information than what we'll have time to talk about this evening. Now, um, before I before we break into uh, this this show real real heavily, um, or, or this part of the show. Um, there is an audio clip that I believe is absolutely very, very important uh, to, to play. And uh, we did a radio show, two radio shows, a long, long time ago. As a matter of fact, uh, the first radio show was on December the 18th of 2011, and the second radio show was a follow-up. It was December the 21st of 2011. And each one of those had a brother by the name of L.V. Zapata. He does a radio show. He's been taken to heaven by uh, the, our, our Lord Jesus Christ a couple of times. I believe his testimony. I think he's the real deal. Praise God. Uh, and and I, we, he came on our radio show and told us... Uh, his testimony of what Jesus had shown him in regards to uh, this alien uh, conspiracy, the, the you know this whole thing. Now, before I play this clip, what I want you to pay attention to is that when you listen to the folks, the other other Christian uh, you know folks that talk about aliens and and such. They will frequently simply call, say they're interdimensional. Uh, they, there's no discussion about them potentially being from other planets. Uh, when you tell them and you give them, you know, links to YouTube videos with gigantic motherships on them uh, around the corona of the sun, similar to the green uh, spaceship that you're seeing rotate in the uh, uh, photographs on the uh, Blog Talk Radio page tonight. Okay, when you show them that, they kind of freeze up. They don't really know how to respond to it. Uh, when you talk to them about, you know, Isaiah 13, that these, you know, entities that the Lord of hosts, our Heavenly Father, musters these entities, these beings, and sends them from the far ends of the heaven, it, they, they don't know how to respond to it. Because the typical theological mind believes that it's you know that 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 the first heaven is simply the air around the earth. I don't believe that. I believe that the first heaven is this time space continuum. It includes all of the galaxies. It includes billions and billions of stars and planets. Okay, so. I think for this evening, if you feel led, you might want to take advantage of the scripture uh, that in Luke 18, verse 17, which says, For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Therefore, take heed how you hear. See, how, what does that mean, to take heed how you hear? What that means is, if you are predisposed to believe something, then you're not taking heed how you're hearing. So you have to toss away all of your sacred cows. And you've got to open your mind to the possibilities. And Jesus goes on to say, For whoever has knowledge, to him will more, more will be given. And whoever doesn't have 
because they weren't listening properly. Even what he seems to have, more will be taken from him. Praise Jesus. All right, this is Brother L.V. Zapata. This is a little bit of a long clip. I'm gonna get. I want to get uh, Brother Zen to comment in detail on his thoughts on this, but this is worth listening to. This is a blast from the past, past Brother L.V. Zapata testifying on what the Lord Jesus showed him when he was taken off this earth and shown what these alien entities are doing. Praise Jesus for you, Brother L.V. How you doing? Praise the Lord, brother. I'm happy, I'm happy to be we on the radio with the brothers and sisters that are listening. God bless you. And God bless you, Brother John. Hey, God bless you too, brother. Hey, Kenneth, do you want to say hi? Hey, LV, uh, so great to have you on again. I just um, am so blessed to be able to hear what you say. And um, may God bless you and may he speak through you tonight, brother. Amen. God bless you, brother. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm really happy that, that this is a, I, I, I see this as an opportunity to really bring the word of the Lord to the people, and uh, the truth is, is finally coming out. The people will be able to hear the truth, and their eyes will be open. And, you know, there's so much light out there going on, and, and people need to hear the truth, brother. Yeah, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And, you know, folks, I mean, uh, there there are wars in the heavens, and some of the things that uh, LV is going to share with us tonight are going to shed, it'll shed some amazing light um, these are things that, that our Lord, our, our, our Holy Lord Jesus Christ, has shown him in person. Uh, those were confirmed through uh, by Jonathan Kleck. I, I published that on the article on tribulation-now.org. If you go to the website for the main uh, uh, page, you'll see uh, four, at least four articles published on the main page by going to that page. And just scroll down and look. At, at least two of those articles have... Uh, the visions and, and our, you know, the, 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 the visitation by Jesus of uh, Brother Elvi. There's some exciting things about the revelation of heaven where he was taken to heaven. And now tonight he's going to be talking about some of the, uh, some of the most amazing things uh, that, uh, that our, King, uh, our King Jesus Christ shared with him. That, uh, you know, we talked under the last show we talked about that uh, Elvi had been shown by Jesus that indeed... Uh, there were large spaceships that will be landing on Earth, uh, in, and also that the, uh, these aliens have been uh, corroborating and working with the governments of, of, of the world, and, and specifically the government of the United States, which is the Great Babylon. And uh, for those of us who are well-read on these uh, sorts of subjects, the deep underground military bases, uh, the Griada Treaty, which I believe was Truman, uh, the, the, the government, uh, you know, signing uh, agreements to exchange technologies uh, with these alien entities uh, so that, uh, you know, it, it, folks, confirmed. Glory to Jesus confirmed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, and tonight, um, LV is going to share with us uh, a, a lot of stuff. Um, that uh, Jesus showed him regarding these alien entities, and uh, and uh, particularly, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you straight up, I don't know all the details that Elvie's going to share with us tonight. So praise God, I think that's great. I want to hear what he has to say. I'm sure you do. And uh, Elvie, you were you were saying uh, in an email you had mentioned that our King had shown you like an alien planet or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. And this, and this second trip, the Lord took me to the planet, Brother John. And, 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 and um, I seen clearly where, where they come from, actually. And then this trip, when the Lord took me to the planet, um, he took me in front of a large building. This fine, close to the look of their aircraft, their ships, the way they look. It, it's shaped in that way, but it's a lot bigger. So... When they go back to the planet, there's a huge door that opens into this building where they, set, where they take the people who they are docked here on Earth. They take them in into this building, and then they take them out of the ship, and they put them like in another, in another thing that looks like a portal of light, and the person is there suspended, like sleeping. They look, and when, when the Lord took me in there into that building, um, one of the things that, that, that they noticed, they noticed me. They actually did notice me. They seen me, you know. And one thing is that they know the Lord, all right. So they, they knew I wasn't there alone. So a lot of them, I can see them walking away, a lot of them running away to hide themselves, you see. 
because, uh, like I said last week, this is the work of the enemy. So uh, the enemy likes to work in secret, secrecy. Everything is hidden. He wants to keep stuff away from people. This is why these, of all these aliens, the government been lying to the people, okay? They've been keeping everything a secret, and all the evidence and all the communications and all the technology that they have received from the aliens, they've been keeping it as a secret. And, and every time someone gets close to it or can find evidence or, or anything, they will, they will deny it. And they will tell people that, 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 that it's not true. Because they want to keep this this way, they don't want they don't want you know that's one of the things that that, that these aliens are telling the government that they must keep it as a secret because it's a, this, there is a much larger um, picture that they're working on, okay? And part of it is the tribulation. The great picture that they're working on is the tribulation. When the tribulation comes, people will see these aliens. All right, and they will see them for whom they are, for whom they really are. Like I said last week, they are demons, principalities that can take this shape, and, 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 you know, and a lot of them look like that. That's the way they look, with two big eyes, a very small nose, a round head, um, very skinny and tall, seven, eight, nine feet tall. That's the way I saw them in the planet, and, and um. I've seen what, what a lot of people claim that myself, I did not believe it. Years ago, I did not believe this. But I, when I saw them on the planet working on humans who were supposed to be down here on Earth sleeping, they had them out there working on them, either taking um, intelligence from them or, 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 or I don't know exactly what they take from people, because it's all uh, a combined work that they do on, on humans, you know. I know what it is. Uh, I, I know it. I know what it is, brother. Um, what it is is that they're soul scalping. It's an awful, horrible thing. Uh, it's it's spoken of in Ezekiel, um, where there's the where the pro, where the prophet Ezekiel says, you know, and he says, uh, you you take uh, you you hunt the souls of my people. I, I'm trying to remember, but basically, it's a, you hunt the souls of my people like birds, uh, and you uh, use these bands, you know, these wristbands. It's the Di like the Dionysus worshippers did back uh, when when Paul and Timothy were on the earth. It's an awful it's soul scalping. They actually have technologies. Where where they're able to feel they cannot get a hold of the spirit of God, the, the, the God-breathed spirit that's breathed into, the, into man at, in, in, at, con, at conception, uh, you know, the Genesis 2-7 spirit, but they, but they can actually hijack the soul energy of human beings with technologies. And, it's, and it, what they can do is they can move that soul energy into their hybrid creature creations that they're creating uh, with these uh, abductees, and it's just it's just absolutely horrible. As a matter of fact, uh, Kenneth is telling me, um, oh, oh, listen to this, praise Jesus. Uh, Kenneth found the whole verse. Thus saith the Lord God, woe to the woman that sew pillows to the arm to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. We will hunt the souls of my people, and and we ye and will ye save. The souls alive that come unto you. That's in Ezekiel 13:18. So, uh, the Dionysus worshippers actually hunted the souls of human beings, and that's uh, very similar to what these uh, fallen angelic alien uh, creatures are doing to human beings right now. All right, Amen. <clears throat> now, what I think is important to get from this, uh, you know, the whole thing was very interesting. Praise Jesus. But I think. What's important to understand is Brother L.V. Zapata was shown by Jesus that they're on another planet, you see. So we have to expand our glossary of terms beyond, you know, the less adequate understandings. The first heaven is outer space. The first heaven are all the galaxies. The first heaven is all the planets. Then it starts to make sense. The second heaven is the is the demonic dimension. All right. And then in the book of Enoch, when entities die like Nephilim, when they die, they their their 
soul energy or whatever uh, moves on into the second heaven, the other dimension, and they become demons. All right, and then these entities are are fallen angels in the flesh. Okay, they're host bodies, they're hosts. Yea, saith the Lord of hosts. All right, so this is very important to get your arm around. And, and here we have a testimony of Brother Elvie Zapata talking about th th this all going on other planets. Praise God. So it's very important. We expand our understanding of what the first heaven actually means in the Bible. Praise Jesus. Um, uh, Zen, would you like to comment? Sure. Well, you know how I always like to refer to different passages and different scriptures to kind of bring forth revelation that confirms different people as witnesses and things that they say. So I just want to read a real small passage, and it's from uh, the book of Jehovah. It says this, and then I'll, I'll comment. I looked over the wide heavens that I had made, and I saw countless millions of spirits of the dead that had lived and died on other corporeal worlds before the earth was made. I spake in the firmament, and my voice reached to the uttermost places. And there came in answer to the sounds of my voice, myriads of angels from the roadway in heaven where the earth traveleth. I said to them, Behold, a new world have I created. Come ye, and enjoy it. Yea, Ye shall learn from it how it was with other worlds in ages past. There alighted upon the new earth millions of angels from heaven, but many of them had never fulfilled a corporeal life, having died in infancy, and these angels comprehended not procreation nor corporeal life. And I said, Go and deliver Asu from darkness, for he shall also rise in spirit to inherit my Aetherian worlds. And now was the earth in the latter days of Simu, and the angels could readily take on corporeal bodies for themselves. Out of the elements of the earth clothed they themselves by the force of their wills, with flesh and bones by the side of the Asuians took they on corporeal forms. And I said, Go ye forth and partake of all that is on the earth, but partake ye not of the tree of life, lest in the labor ye become procreators, and as if dead to the heavens when she came. But those who had never learned corporeal things, being imperfect in wisdom, comprehended not Jehovah's words, and they dwelt with the Assyrians and were tempted and partook of the fruit of the tree of life. And lo and behold, they saw their own nakedness. And there was born of the first race, Isu, a new race called man. And Jehovah took the earth out of the travail of Simu, and the angels gave up their corporal bodies. Jehovah said, Because ye have raised up those that shall be joint hairs in heaven, ye shall tread the earth with your feet, and walk by the sides of the newborn, being guardian angels over them. For they are of your own flesh and kin fruit of your seed have I quickened with my spirit, and man shall come forth with a birthright to my Aetherian world. In this passage, it gives reference to the souls of the angels, you know, and our first estate, when we were spiritual beings, having been part of the Elohim and creating in other places and other universes, and how with the fall of Adam and Eve, that the second world age began and our requirement to come into flesh to be part of this this world, this fallen world where we're here in a fallen flesh form surrounded by devils and demons and how it would be that we're going to learn through the knowledge of good and evil, through the duality of pain and pleasure, the lessons of life, and how it would be that this life and those lessons would help us to hopefully for those that, you know, aspire to seek the kingdom first, to come to remembrance and all these things and to accept the grace and the faith and the the beauty and the deliverance of salvation to each one of us by the 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 sacrifice that Christ gave of himself to be the Passover lamb, to allow himself to be brutally murdered and battered and spit on and criticized and just treated in cruelty. 
He did all those things for us to give us a renewed chance to get back to our first estate. So myself, I never put the Father into a box, and I never say, you know, as far as opening myself and allowing for new possibility, I never just keep him in a box. You know, I, I always allow for myself to learn new things, and we just never know as to the awesomeness uh, of our Creator, of the Father, and of the Son. And so every day, you know, the the horizons, horizons seem to be broadened. Just think of a, a hundred years ago, you know, we were in horse and buggy. We did not have any of the technology that we have now. The Internet was not available now that we do have the internet, we have access to all worlds. Just the, at the press of a couple of strokes, uh, you know, we have a, a search bar where we can type in keywords and find articles and videos and images and, and you know, sound and voice files that are connected to discernment and knowledge from people all over the world that we will never, ever have chance to meet that we will never befriend in person, but through the hyperspace of the Internet, we can breach space and time and come together. Even with what we're doing now with the radio program and with so many people, you know, all accessing, accessing the same space from so many parts of the world, what a blessing all of this is. And so... Every day there's new possibilities, and the Father is increasingly uh, in bringing us discernment and knowledge in strange and beautiful ways, and we just never know what the next thing is going to be. And so we have to, you know, allow ourselves to learn new things and to be taught in different ways, because if you close yourself off to possibility, uh, you may miss a lot of things. And, and just with the esoteric nature of all the things that are coming forth to light now, the you know the reptilian presence, the nakash, the feathered serpent, how all these things tie to Genesis chapter 3, the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. There's so many things that have been veiled within the word, contained within the gospel that could not be made sense of until this time. Amen. And when you look at the word, you know, with new possibility and with the new understandings that are coming to light from everywhere, because we're all now being, we're we're part of solving the puzzle that is truth. You know, there's so many testimonies coming from so many people from all over the world, and you don't have to be, you know, somebody that is a leader of a church, and because uh, and a lot of times, as y'all said earlier in the show, they have to uh, limit themselves as far as what they can say, what they can discuss, what they can preach on, because there's so many expectations and there's so many um, there's so many restrictions that are placed upon them. Even with the the scientists, you know, they have to support. The Darwinian theory, they can't speak about the giants, the fallen angels. They laugh at everybody that ever makes any kind of assumption against what has been, um, you know, accepted as truth. And they they put themselves in a box and they don't allow themselves to, to learn different. We have to be, you know, innocent as babes and open to, to learning every day because we just don't understand the awesomeness that is our Father and the wisdom that keeps coming forth every day. It's broadening our horizons, and we're all learning together. Oh, amen. Praise Jesus. Kenneth? Yeah, John, just, uh, you know, a lot of people listening may say, whoa, ho, we're getting off track with regard to the canon. I just want to remind everybody that the, um, the, the Book of Enoch is still in the Ethiopian and the Serbian canon. And then the uh, King James, I'm holding a uh, 400th, anniversary edition of the King James 1611 version of the Bible, and in the beginning of it, they have the translator's notes about the Apocrypha, and, and they say that this is a beneficial work for all believers to read. So there are many things 
that are found outside of the Bible that are true. And I like to tell the people that I, I teach the Bible to that the Bible is all truth, but not all truth is found in the Bible, but all truth is of God. Oh, yeah, amen. And in, in the book uh, Gazing in the Glory by uh, Pastor Bruce Allen, uh, he was taken up into the heavens, into outer space with the, with the Lord, uh, by the Father. And um, it, it was just an amazing testimony where God had told Pastor Allen uh, that uh, a lot of the truth is in uh, the extra biblical books, the pseudoepigrapha, the apocrypha, um, and uh, it was very clear uh, that that you're not going to understand things unless you you take a look at those. Um, so praise Jesus, and and that's uh, it's it's very exciting. And then you have um, uh, uh, Proverbs 25. Verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search out a matter. Now, folks, you got to think about what this is saying. It's the glory of God to concealeth a matter. You hearing what that says? God does not give us all the details. God intentionally conceals it and expects us to dig it up. That's part of how this all works. Praise Jesus. So if it's the glory of kings to search out a matter, then uh, all I got to say is that uh, Zen Brother Zen is is definitely uh, a king. Praise Jesus in my in my book anyway for sure. Um, and folks, you know, also just so you know, before we go on because there's a lot of really exciting stuff we're going to bring forward. Um, there is a, 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 a quote that I just want to read for you real fast. And it's a quote by uh, the pastor's pastor, Dr. J. Vernon McGee. So there are all kinds of pastors of churches out there that that have followed the many, many sermons of Dr. J. Vernon McGee. And in his book, Through the Bible, he wrote, quote, I believe that Genesis is telling us that the earth became without form and void and was just as uninhabitable as the moon when the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. We can only suggest that there was some pre-Adamic creature that was on the earth. Pre-Adamic. And it seems that all of this is connected with the fall of Lucifer. Okay, and then he goes on to say, uh, I believe that the entire universe came under this great catastrophe, and but God has not given us all the details. The, this is J. Vernon McGee again, quote, he says, the fact of the matter is that he, God, has given us very, very few details. Okay, and in this case, he's referring to the first chapter of Genesis, and that's a, an absolute big amen, praise Jesus. Okay, so um, anyway, very, very exciting stuff. Um, and thank you for that, Zen, because that was awesome. And what what book was that, brother? Book of Jehovah. Um, also, you know, the Book of Enoch. It, uh, in in reading the Book of Enoch, it speaks about, Enoch tells us that he is writing for a generation that is not yet, that is far into the future. And so a lot of things that have been written, even in Revelation, you know, the, the vision of John, uh, those things are concealed for a later time and we are that generation where all these things are being brought forth because we're the fig tree generation we're the last generation we're the ones that are going to be witness to the second coming of our lord and our king and so everything will be revealed and we're supposed to it's this generation where the word will be teached unto all the peoples of the world and we see that happening as well and so a lot of things that have been written were not to be fulfilled and the were not to be understood until this time. And so that's why it, it is that we see a flood of information coming from all parts of the world. And the Internet is critical in, you know, giving us access to all those things because so much of what it, it, prior – People had to build up their libraries, and they had to collect books. And you know, most of the times, you would only get a certain amount of what would be the the jigsaw puzzles of truth. And nobody had all of the keys, and certainly nobody had access to all of them in the way that we do now. Here, really, we can type in the 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 title 
of any extra biblical book, the pseudepigraphal, the apocryphal, Dead Sea Scrolls, the Nakamati Codices. Two of these collections just came forth in 1945, the Nakamati Collection. The Dead Sea Scrolls came to light in 1947. Uh, there was a, a new set of 70 metal books that were just recently found in 2009. So there's incredible amounts of information that are coming forth. And for those that are lovers of the truth, that are seekers of the kingdom, it's like being a criminal investigator and trying to solve a crime and trying to solve what is the truth that has been underlying and has been veiled in the gospel for so long we have to study all of the different pieces even those things that seem uh, totally irrelevant and totally unconnected to what seems to be the premise of the crime because it is a crime you have to realize that the forces of evil the seed line of cain going back to the garden and even with the the fall of the watchers uh, they're mating with the daughters of man. There has been a bloodline that has been dedicated to evil and dedicated to keeping the masses in ignorance and hiding the truth. And they have at every way done all they, they could to keep us distracted from the truth, to keep us entertained, um, you know, vain entertainments and and keep us from even wanting to seek out what is relevant to our higher purpose for being here on this planet. And so unless you understand that this that these people and this line and this organized group uh has been working you know at all terms of history and at every uh step of the way to keep you from truth and to keep you dumbed down and in ignorant, you won't understand really why it is that so much has been stripped away and so much has been hidden. And so for us to want to solve, you know, what is the kingdom and what is our purpose for being here? What is life really all about? Who are we really? All these things are the secrets that are contained in the gospel. And part of that, that foundational truth is has been stripped away and is part of the apocryphal, the extra biblical book. Because some, even with the Book of Enoch, that book helps one to understand from whence evil came. So I hear so many people that when they see the reality of what we're dealing with in the world and they see the prevalence of evil in the world and how so many evil things happen. They blame God and they ascribe that all to God, but they don't understand that, you know, the fallen angels and their interdiction and all the things that they taught humanity, war and the enchantments and even abortion, all these things go back to their abandoning their first estate and their having led us astray into deception. And so it's important to understand these things, to understand that the Father has judge them for the things that they've done. That's why they are excluded from salvation. Enoch speaks about how they weep and they cry at the severity of the judgment that has been levied upon them. And so that's why I think it's important to study these different things to get a, a full understanding on, on the details that have been uh, stripped away from from you and kept away from you. Uh, in their effort to keep you dumbed down. Oh, yeah, amen. As a matter of fact, if you do a proper study, if you just search on Book of Life or if you have an electronic concordance and you search on Book Plus Life, um, and you're going to basically find that there are three dispositions of, 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 the book, of people in the Book of Life. You have uh, people... You have the main people, which are the elect. Um, those were the ones who went through the election process before the foundations of the earth, and uh, that, and you know, ultimately, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, elected, if you will, God had elected them or whatnot to come here and and uh, die like men on the earth. 
Okay, and this is long and complicated, and it's kind of outside of the scope of, of what we were going to cover tonight. But suffice it to say that Psalms 82 uh, is about us. Okay, so right there you say, let's just to cover this real quick, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges amongst the gods. How long will you just judge unjustly and show partiality, partiality to the wicked? Okay, and and the Lord goes on in verse 6. He says, I said, ye are gods. Ye are all children of the Most High, sons of God. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So this was a, a verdict. This was a judgment upon us uh, after being, you know, pri being involved in the uh, original angel wars uh, from the fall of, of mankind uh, before the Garden of Eden. Um, and uh, the original sin, and I, I covered this for you know Zen covers it in incredible detail in his book Sons of God, Who Are We and Why Are We Here? One of the most amazing books I've ever read, uh, and also uh, there's some uh, for for people who are less inclined to do deep dive research. Um, there's a couple high level articles I've written called uh, The Angel Wars and the Original Sin, which you can access at tribulation now.org uh, just by clicking in the black banner there. There's a link there to one of those articles, and it gives you links to all the other ones. So, But anyway, the Book of Life, I'm going to just point this out. You might say, well, if people's names were written in the Book of Life before the foundations of the earth, and then they can be, if they don't make the cut, they can be blotted out of the book of life. So Jesus says in Revelation 2 that he will not, he's referring to one of the churches, it may be Thyatira, I'm not sure which one, but he says, I will not blot you out of the book of life if you behave in such and such a way. Okay, so you can be blotted out of the book of life, and but ultimately we're all written into the book of life in the very beginning, before the foundations of the earth. But in Revelation 17, verse uh, eight, it says, "The beast that you saw and is not, and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go, to, and go into perdition. And those who dwell on the earth, the princes of the world, will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from when? From the foundation of the world. Okay, so there are these entities, these hybrid entities that you know are on this earth today that dwell amongst us that are not and never have been written into the book of life. So there's your confirmation on what Zen was just talking about. Praise Jesus. Zen? I want to read one other quick passage, and this will also confirm the things that we're saying. I want to also um, let the listening audience know that if they have not uh, read my book or studied it, that John wrote the introduction for for that book, Sons of God, Who We Are and Why We're Here, and I want to thank you for that too as well, John. Um, it says this, and this is a quote from the Apocryphon of, of John. And he made a plan with his powers. He sent his angels to the daughters of men that they might take some of them for themselves and raise offspring for their enjoyment. And at first they did not succeed. When they had no success, they gathered together again and they made a plan together. They created a counterfeit spirit who resembled the spirit who had descended, so as to pollute the souls through it. And the angels changed themselves in their likeness, into the likeness of their mates, the daughters of men, filling them with the spirit of darkness, which they had mixed for them, and with evil. They brought gold and silver and a gift of copper and iron and metal and all kinds of things. And they steered the people who had followed them into great troubles by leading them astray with many deceptions. They, the people, became old without having enjoyment. They died not having found truth and without knowing the God of truth. And thus the whole creation became enslaved forever from the foundation of the world until now. And they took women and begot children out of the darkness according to the likeness of their spirit. And they closed their hearts and they hardened themselves through the hardness of the counterfeit spirit until now. 
So this is speaking about the fallen ones and how it is that they were the ones, just like as the book of Enoch says, that led the world astray in deception. They were the ones that established themselves as the minor gods, the pantheon of all the different um, gods that are worshipped by all the nations, the pagan nations that worship uh, a pantheon of gods. They they are the ones that have established idolatry and that stole uh, the worship of the Most High and the worship of, of His Son, the knowledge of truth that used to be, um, you know, that the fallen angels themselves held and were part of. But they decided to go against all of that, to lead the world astray, to take and to bring forth children of their own and to establish themselves in worship. And that's why it is that the first two commandments of the Ten Commandments are against idolatry and against taking foreign gods and the and the bowing down to foreign gods. The Father wants you to know that all of the other nations of the world are worshiping the fallen ones, and that's why they do the victim sacrifice, the child sacrifice to idols such as Moloch, the same things that are continually happening in places like Bohemian Grove, even until today, uh, even with, you know, where we are in modern day society and living, all these things are still happening. They are, These nations and these people are still giving, giving reverence to the fallen ones, and they have no idea as to the having been led astray. They think it's totally okay to worship a pantheon of gods, but they have no idea that their gods are actually the fallen angels, the fallen ones, and that that's why it is that they've been led astray. And that's why Christ had to come into the flesh to be the way and the truth and the light and to example to us by his life, his sinless life, and having uh, taught us about the secrets of heaven, having the apostles write down in confirmation the many stories associated to him, which, if studied, gives you the revelation of truth to, to understand that he and the Father were one, that he is a representative of the Most High, the creator of us all, the Father of us all, and that he wants you to know the truth so you will no longer be led astray. So that you can come to remembrance of who you are, why you're here, and embrace that. And to assume the responsibility of that and to teach others uh, to, to lead them to remembrance. That's why it is that Christ told us to know thyself. Oh, yeah, amen. And people have this, it's amazing how easily we look over certain verses uh, in the Bible. If you do a search on God of gods, go ahead, give it a try. God of gods. Why would our Heavenly Father call himself Yahweh El, God of gods? He's not God of little golden calves, folks. Get it? These are Beni Ha Elohim. These are minor gods. Okay, praise Jesus. It's amazing that we just miss these concepts. Kenneth? Yeah, that passage that uh, Zen just read um, kind of took Genesis chapter 6 and just exploded it for understanding. And then, you know, we have, we, we, we deal, like, like Paul said to the Corinthians, he, he said that although we're flesh, our, our body, the battle is high and mighty. You know, it's, it's, um, we, we battle against principalities and powers, so we ought to know them. You know, there's um, about four at least four non-canonical books referenced in the New Testament. Uh, of course, we talked about the book of Enoch here, and both uh, Jude and Peter referenced that book on numerous occasions. But but I don't know if many listeners know, I'm sure Zen did, and Zen, I'm reading your book right now, brother, and it's it's awesome. Praise Jesus, it's so good. Uh, but a uh, few people know that that favorite verse of mine where it talks about, uh, Paul talks about Satan as an angel of light, you know, transforming as an angel of light, that's out of the life of Adam and Eve. And also his reference to the third heaven came out of the life of Adam and Eve. And then the assumption of Moses, you know. In Jude 9, where Michael the archangel argued or, or um, debated, I should say, he didn't say anything unbecoming against the devil. 
but uh, anyways, that, that's out of um, that's that's where that argument in Jude came from. And then the martyrdom of Isaiah is referenced in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 37, where it's talking about they were sawn in two. So, you know, um, it, these were very wise men who wrote these books, and they studied these books. So I, I just have the position that if people like Paul and Jude and Peter and the writer of Hebrews were to study these books, there's probably some benefit if we do it too. So that's just, oh. that's that's where it's at, you know. Yeah, amen. Praise Jesus. And and folks, here I just looked up a few of them for you. Deuteronomy 10:17. Uh, for the Lord your God is God of gods. All right? Uh, 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 Joshua 22:22. 22, 22. The Lord God of gods. The Lord God of gods he knoweth, and Israel he shall know. Okay? It goes on. Psalms 136:2. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. That's Yah, Va'el. Praise Jesus. Uh, uh, Daniel 2:47. The king answered unto Daniel and said, of tr of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods. And uh, uh, Daniel 11.36, um, uh, And magnify himself above every God, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. Praise Jesus. And then the term El Elyon, okay, the Most High God. Praise Jesus. Our Heavenly Father created, these are sons of God. These are all lesser beings in the hierarchy. Sons of God are beings. See, seraphim, seraphim are the reptilian shape-shifting entities. Fallen seraphim. So if you look up seraph in uh, Wikipedia, okay, just type in S-E-R-A-P-H, you're going to see a dragon-like creature. It breathes fire, the whole deal. They're dragons, right? But the fallen ones... Okay, fallen seraphim are these draconian, you know, lizard creatures, these nakash. Okay, so, um, and, and that's one of the things we wanted to talk about on the show here tonight, is this concept of the nakash. But before we get to that, let me just share with you a couple of scriptures for some of you who might still be, you know, tapping your finger on the desk. Consider searching whenever you see in the Bible. Um, uh, end of the heaven, or do a word search on chariots. That's another one. Another one is, and this is real important, hosts of heaven. Okay, so I'm just going to share with you a couple of these scriptures just to wet your whistle. There's a bunch of them out there. Isaiah 13, 4 through 5. The Lord of hosts, that's our Heavenly Father, musters the army for battle. They come from a far country from the end of the heaven. Now, for those people out there, you know, who just can't let go of the first heaven being just the air around the earth, come on. From the end of the heaven, what, what is this, the end of the air of the earth? Come on, you can't, there's no way to twist this to mean anything except outer space, folks. That's what this means. Praise Jesus. All right, and, and, and it goes on to say, the Lord and his weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. So God, our Father, sends extraterrestrial beings to the earth to punish the unrighteous. Praise God. It's exciting. And also you see this, this in Joel 2.5 with the noise-like chariots over mountains they leap. See, chariots, you see, don't leap over mountains. Okay, Sister Kat Kerr, in her in her many, many, many testimonies of being taken to heaven, was in a spacecraft, for lack of a better term. Okay, she you know, she said she was in some kind of a ship, okay, and she was taken and that the Lord will take you or the angel that escorts you to heaven will take you past all the nebulas and you'll be able to see the nebulas in where? In outer space, which is the first heaven. You'll be on your way to the planet, which is known as heaven. Okay, and then there's other levels of heaven, of course. Praise Jesus, which go into the dimension thing, praise God, in the eternal realm. Okay, but there you go. Over the mountains they leap, like, like the noise of flaming fire that devours the stubble. Like a strong people set in battle array. It doesn't say a strong people set in battle array. Joel 2.5 says like a strong people set in battle array. Praise God. Listen to this. Do a word search on host of heaven. Jeremiah 
And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled like the place of Tophet, uh, because all the houses on whose roofs they have burned incense to all the hosts of heaven and poured out drink offerings to other gods. Get it? Host of heaven? Other gods? These are alien, fallen angel entities. Okay, that's what this whole thing is about. My 19.13, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 17.3, Deuteronomy 4.19, Deuteronomy 17.3, First Kings 22.19, Second Kings 17.6, they worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. Second Kings seventeen sixteen. Second Kings twenty one three. Okay, they set up altars for Baal. They worshipped all the hosts of heaven and they served them. See, for those theologians out there who said, ah, 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 those are actually stars. They worship. They were sun worshippers. Really? Well, that's fascinating. Tell me how you serve the sun. Hey, Kenneth, do you, do you give the sun like a glass of iced tea? Is that how that works? Hey, John, maybe it's like those people on the beaches down in Florida. You know, they just kind of lay there with that mirror on their faces. But all joking aside for a minute, you know, 57 different varieties, you know. Wow. You know, it reminded me when Elvie was talking about being taken to that planet and he saw, saw those large-headed, big-eyed beings. That reminded me of Pittman's testimony of when the Lord took him to hell and then, um, you know, that Disney movie with Megamind, just like Aleister Crawley's lamb, you know, which is the Tibetan word for the way or the path. Wow. You start to see all these things fit together. You know, there's even these um, satanic websites out there that recommend that their followers read the, uh, the Watcher's 2 book by Fowler, you know, Ray Fowler. And the reason is why, Johnny? Why? Why are they doing this? Why are these Satanists? Studying the alien, alien abduction books, you know, it's kind of interesting, John. Oh, yeah, amen. And, and, and again, before I read you this, one last verse and hand the mic over to Zen. Revelation 4.11, this is critical. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. This particular series of earth ages that, that we are currently at the very, very end of right now are all ultimately about the manifestation of the sons of God, not here on the earth for you latter rain people out there. That is not what that's about, praise God. It's about when we ascend to heaven and we take on our new posts ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ our King over the new heavens and the new earth that's how big of a deal this is people who we are in the grand scheme of the beings of all of the universe is so unbelievably special so that words cannot possibly describe it so here you have in Isaiah 34 verse 4 okay it says quote all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled up like a scroll. All their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falls from the vine and the fruit falls from the fig tree. Here you have the Lord talking about he's going to shake the heavens, he's going to move the earth out of its place, he's going to dissolve all the hosts of heaven. He's going to wipe the whole thing out, folks. And, oh, and don't, you know, we don't know, it's not for us that, you know, the, this is the Lord's movie. As Pastor Francis Chan correctly says, we need to humble ourselves and be so grateful for this opportunity to move on to the next level, to move on as a royal priesthood uh, in the end of the next age we are perceived as royalty amongst the 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 various you know when you do a serious deep dive study of uh of alien abductee testimony over decades of time what you will discover is that we are we the sons of god here on earth the, those of us who are followers of jesus christ yeshua under our Heavenly Father, Yahweh El, the Most High God, the Great El Elyon, we are perceived as royalty in the universe of beings. Okay, so when God wipes everything out, providing we are living in righteousness and holiness and make the cut, serving Jesus Christ and claiming the blood of the Lamb and repenting for our sins – we move on to the next level. And that next level, we don't even know. The new millennium is just a training ground for eternity. None of us even knows how awesome 
our next roles will be after the new millennium. Praise Jesus. Zen? Well, I think one of the other important things to understand about uh, the differences between the Most High and the fallen angels as being the idol gods or the minor gods and the pantheon of, you know, the 12 gods and goddesses of the Roman, the Hindu, the Greeks, all the different cultures of the world um, besides chosen Israel that pretty much worship the fallen angels as their gods, is that unless you understand the differences you really can't understand the history of the Bible and the secrets that have been contained within it. You you won't understand why it is that you know the flood was brought upon the earth, why it was that Noah and his bloodline was spared. You know, that's one of the things that uh I have a problem with this this whole new uh, the Bible series that is coming on on the History Channel is they exclude all these things. Um, they totally skipped over the seed line of Cain. They skipped over the fallen angels and the giants. They blamed humanity for the flood. Uh, even when Moses was, you know, took the people out of the bondage of Egypt, and Joshua was given over authority of Israel and when he sent the spies into the land, they didn't portray any of the giants. They showed none of the hybrid lines of Cain. And you, unless you understand that these are the enemy, they were the seed of the serpent that has been fighting against the Most High and his chosen people throughout the whole history and evolution of the word even from the Old to the New Testament, that these are the ones that Christ referred to as saying they were of Abraham's seed, but they were the ones that sought to kill him, that conspired to kill him. They were the ones that were labeled the the den of vipers, the, the, an abominable seed. When it speaks about um, the abominable branch in Isaiah chapter 14 and how it, his bloodline and how his children would not be allowed to inherit cities or to to build cities all these things do not make sense unless you have this discernment unless you have this understanding so much that is held as secretive as esoteric within the word the bible will read like a foreign language until you come to discernment on some of these things that sound completely fantastical and sound completely, uh, you know, like fairy tale and lunatic fringe. And most people, you know, like the seminaries and the mainstream pastors and preachers and ministers, they don't teach about any of these things. You, you can't even go up and ask them a serious question about any of it because they'll just laugh you off. There, it has no relevancy in their lives and how they can assumed to teach truth when from the word when they leave out all those things is just beyond me and that that's why i think even though i'm glad that the history channel is doing a series on the bible and it's getting people interested and in, in the word and in in you know um studying it they left out so much that is so critical that you know, people just won't understand when they do start to read the word and they come to the part where the father sends Joshua and the spies into the land and tells them to kill every man, woman, and child. Uh, it's just, it's going to be completely over their head. Well, as a matter of fact, it's something that uh, a lot of, you know, people who don't understand these things, they use it as an excuse to say, what kind of a God? You say God is love. Well, what right. kind of a God would, would send and kill every man, woman, and child? That's ridiculous. You know, they use it to debunk the Bible. Right. And they don't understand that this was the, this was our Heavenly Father doing everything he could to wipe out the destruction of the bloodline, that would, the purity of the bloodline that was necessary for the birth of our King Jesus Christ. Um, it's just absolutely amazing. Now, folks, <clears throat> if you get the show notes at tribulation-now.net, if you download a copy of the show notes, in there, there's over well over 50, maybe 60 quotations of UFO alien sightings 
going all the way back to 45,000 years before Christ. You're like, what? That's impossible. How can there be 45,000 years B.C. when the Adamic bloodline only goes back to roughly 6,000 years? That's because <laughs> Adam and Eve were injected into a world teeming with life. The earth is millions and millions and millions, arguably billions of years old. Folks, okay, there is a 50,000-year-old meteor crater in, in Arizona. The, 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 the pyramids are estimated uh, to be approximately 12,000 year uh, 12, years old. These, these superstructures, these 150-ton rocks that were cut with laser precision in Pumapunku were not done by a bunch of giants. They were done by technologies, by spacecraft, by laser beams, by anti-gravity devices. Okay, there, there's records of, of, of atomic nuclear wars that took place as far back as 3,000 years before Jesus was brought to the, er, born on the earth. Okay, these things are important for people to understand, and if you don't embrace them as part of your Christianity, as part of a biblical truth, how can you witness to somebody you're sitting across the table from that just watched the last five episodes of Ancient Aliens? They're not lying, folks. That's the problem is the ancient aliens people are telling the truth. The archaeological information is undeniable. The problem is that they're yanking out Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and they're making him part of the mythology. That's the problem. Until you understand these concepts, you are an ineffective witness for our King and, 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 and our Heavenly Father. Listen to this. You walk into just about any decent church out there that has a bookstore in the church, you're going to see a book written by Josephus. This is a quote from Josephus from 70 AD. Listen to this. From his book, The Jewish War, book uh, CXI, which is uh, 111, I guess, it says, quote, on the 21st of May, a demonic phantom of incredible size, for before the sunset there appeared in the air over the whole country chariots and armed troops coursing through the clouds and surrounding the cities. Why don't you take that quote into your pastor and meet him in the bookstore, hold up the Flavius Josephus book, say, you know what, did you know that Josephus, Josephus said this, and give him that quote and see what he says. Talk about a deer in the headlights, praise Jesus. Constantine, in 312 A.D., and his army all beheld in the heavens a luminous cross. He claimed to have been shown across at the sun of the sign of Christ to, tri uh, to triumph over uh, would triumph over Max Maxentius. Okay, there are some that believe that that may have been some type of you know extraterrestrial. There, there is one after the other. India, one night on a hot season, uh, we were leaving the roof of the summer house, and the veil of the woman's face slipped off the night, and the demigod was seated in his car over his head. This is referring to a car at, in. Alien craft, and the gaze suddenly fell upon her. There are literally over 50, 60 quotations going all the way from 45,000 BC uh, regarding caves and drawings of alien spacecraft, all the way up to 927 AD France, from France. Um, it's just unbelievable. Here's one from 842 AD France. Multicolored armies were seen marching in the sky. These sightings of infernal armies were nocturnal. They several times accompanied the siege of Jerusalem. Flaming torches, spears, spheres, flying spheres, going across the sky, brighter light than the stars. These are chariots of fire. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. The Gnostics preached that there was an invasion that occurred of the Archon. The ancient Gnostics preached that there was an invasion that occurred of what they called archons. It occurred 
around 3600 BC and arguably also around 1600 years uh, before the Nag Hammadi texts were actually buried. Okay, it says they, they wrote that this invasion was like a virus and in fact they were hard pressed to describe it. Now isn't it fascinating that in the ancient Indian remains of Mohenjo-Daro at Harappa, there's evidence of radioactive ash. And also in the same area, there's evidence of stone turned to glass. Amen? Praise God. All right, ancient atomic wars that took place. And this goes on to say the beings that were invaded were called archons. These archons had the ability to duplicate reality, to fool us. They were jealous of us because we have an essence of some kind of soul that they don't possess. That would be known as the spirit. That's the capital S soul that was breathed into the nostrils of Adam. In the ancient Hebrew text, in Genesis 2-7, the word soul, living soul, it's how it's translated, is a capital S. It is the spirit. And these entities don't possess it, and they try to get it. It is their God particle. They've been trying to get a hold of the God particle of man for arguably thousands of years, maybe longer. Listen to this excerpt. From This excerpt is from The Children of the Matrix. This is written by Ike, but he's quoting another author. Quote, Franz Comp came across a common theme which I have found in the re reptilian research. They, that's the reptilians, the Chittahuri, as referred to as Credo, by Credo Mutwa, the ancient, the old uh, African shaman, they want something very badly that is contained in the Nordic and human genetic code. And interbreeding is the way they access it. Folks, this is in the Bible. Genesis 24, verse 37. It says, Now my master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But you shall go to my father's house and to my family, and from there take a wife for my son. Our Heavenly Father forbid them to intermarry with the land of Canaan hybrids. Genesis 28.6, Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to the Padan Aram to take himself a wife from there, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge saying, you shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. But Esau did. That's why God hates Esau. Praise Jesus. This is serious stuff, folks. These reptilian Nikash shape-shifting entities hybridize themselves with mankind. And it is destroying what, well, it's a, boy, that is a thousand, multi-thousand year old story. Uh, praise Jesus. Um, uh, Zen? Yeah, that's, that's why it's so important to have this understanding. Because once you understand and have the discernment and you see that there has been a war, an ongoing war between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent since the time of Eve and, and the garden. And when you start to really study the scripture and understand about our first estate, you realize also that the enmity that is between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, that it actually goes back to the separation of light and darkness. And the crowning of Yahushua as king and his being given dominion over the entirety of the universe and all creation. Because it was in that moment and during that time, we're going back to the second day, that Lucifer, that iniquity was found within him. And that his being jealous of the son and his being given dominion was what caused him to lead an insurrection and a rebellion. 
And that is what led him to tempt one-third of the angels of the Most High to join him in insurrection and to join him in this rebellion. And that's where the original sin is because we also, as spiritual beings, as being part of the first estate and part of the Morning Star administration and part of all of that that occurred during that time, that is why we find ourselves in flesh now. And that's what led us to what is our election for this lifetime and what is our um, circumstances and situations surrounding our birth and our lives. That is also why Esau was hated. It, it, the father, of course, saw that he was going to um, you know, give up his birthright and also join the hybrid uh, Cain line and take pagan wives, but he was hated before he ever entered into the womb. And the reason was is because he was part of the insurrection, the rebellion. In some way, he served evil in his first estate. And that is also why Jacob was favored. We have to look into the deeper aspects of these things in order to understand why it is that we also are in the flesh, why it is that we're here in, in flesh embodiment, and why all of us, you know, why certain people are born into certain um, bloodlines, into certain groups of people, into certain religions. It all has to do with election. And so that's why it is that that Christ speaks about uh, some of us having be, been predestinated and having pre-election and that we had pre-existence before entering into the flesh. All these things are issues that I'm covering in what will be my next book, and it will be available soon. I have a a deadline for it in less than a month now, and I have to turn it into Tate, and and then all these things will you know be brought to light for you as a public audience uh, with the next publication. I'm, I don't even have a title for the book yet, but it will cover all this, um, what is still veiled and kept secret uh, about our first estates and why it is that we're in the flesh now. It will be a follow-up on my sixth book, Sons of God, Who We Are and Why We're Here, which touches upon these subjects but doesn't cover them in, in the way that I'm going to be covering them with this book. Wow, that's awesome. Praise God. Yeah, keep me keep me appraised because when you get to the point where you want to talk about it, let's get you on the air and we'll we'll cover that in great detail, okay? I'll send you the manuscript as soon as I get it to um, the place where I'm going to turn it into tape. It'll be less than a month, so... All right, praise God. Now, folks, listen to this. Now, remember back at the very beginning of the radio show where I played the, the testimony of uh, – actually, the very beginning of this segment of the show where I played the testimony of Brother L.V. Zapata. Okay, and you remember that he had said that they were – that he had seen them, that Jesus had shown these alien entities, uh, fallen angel entities, uh, you know, using evidently some kind of a technology or whatever, taking energy out of the people that they had trapped in these, you know, whatever, stasis-like containers on other planets. Amen? All right, now, and I said, oh, I know what they're doing. They're soul scalping. And then we read the, the text about, about the, the, the bak, 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 bakalai, bak, bakiai uh, from, you know, the Dionysus worshipers and how they steal the souls like birds. I'll get this. Praise Jesus. Okay, um, uh, uh, from uh, John Lash, who was uh, with Art Bell on Coast to Coast AM on March 19th of 2005, he quotes, The first apocalypse of James from the Ma Nag Hammadi Codices text. And he says, it says, and I quote, They will take away the souls by theft. He's referring, in the first apocalypse of James, he's referring to the archon. This is what we refer to today as abduction. Okay, so when you have all these New Agers out there, uh, like Sheldon Neidl and these other folks, I, you know, boy, I could give you a big old list of names, and we shouldn't judge them. We need to pray for them because we don't know, you know, we don't, we don't have the ability to judge who can be saved, who isn't written into the Book of Life, who, you know, that's not our job. 
Our job is to witness to people and pray for them and let the Heavenly Father, let Jesus knock. Okay, if that's what's what what has to be, you know, what 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 is what the Lord wants to do if it's in his will. Okay, now, but look, the apocalypse of James comes right out and talks about the theft of souls that these archons uh, are accomplishing. Now, there's also another thing here I wanted to bring forward to you that, that I think you'll find absolutely mind-bending. Now, Kenneth had to drop off, but this would have blown his mind if he was still on the air with us. Um, and I'll have to mention it to him tomorrow when he gives me a call. But praise Jesus. Listen to this. This is powerful. All right. Um, uh, and I'm gonna, I am gonna—I got to find the right place to start reading here. Praise Jesus. Okay. This is talking. This is from a book called The Serpents uh, uh, of Wisdom. All right, and it's talking about the Danans, and uh, it's going back to the pre-Diluvian era, Lemuria, Atlantis. Listen to what this says. This is amazing. Okay, it goes on and says, the Danan Brotherhood, this is talking about, and just to help you out here, this is fallen seraphim. These are shape-shifting reptilians. Think Quetzalcoatl. Uh, think all these different gods uh, of the ancient Aztecs, the Incas, the Mayans, okay, uh, the, the Hindus. If you look at the, the artwork in any uh, Thai restaurant, in any Hindu place, it's got dragons everywhere, okay? These are fallen seraphim. And they came to the earth so long ago, arguably 400,000 years ago is the original Anunnaki. Now, this book refers to the Danon group. He says the Danon Brotherhood of Magicians called Telkines, who, according to Diodorus, had the power to heal, change the weather, and at will shape shift into any desired physical form. Okay, and it goes on to listen to this. One Danon clan of colonists was assimilated into the Hebrew tribal system known as the tribe of Dan. Now, anybody who's done a uh, deep dive research on the tribe of Dan, uh, you'll you'll notice that in the scripture, a lot of you know th that they had apostatized. They started pr worshiping the star gods, the host of heaven. Uh, then they then you know and they they apostatized from God, and a lot of uh, the good uh, uh, Israelites ran away from the northern tribes and came back down to the southern tribes in Judah. Praise Jesus. Okay, and then the, the darker ones migrated up into Europe. Okay, these are hybrid bloodlines that affected some of these folks. Now, do we know who's who? No. Anybody out there who is speaking as if they have some clue who the Jews who are not Jews are needs to get a clue because they don't know. I'm telling you right now, it is not possible to track it. I studied it for years and years and years under Barbara Aho and many other sources, and you will never, never be able to do that. All you're going to do is create a, a, a way for the devil to come up with some uh, form of, of uh, anti-Semitism, just like uh, the, 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 the uh, protocols of the learned elders of Zion attempted to do. Those were written by Lucifer and his minions. The devil wants to take out first the Saturday people and then the Sunday people. It's about killing off the Jews and killing off the Christians. So praise Jesus, we've all been infiltrated by these entities. The hybridization of mankind is absolutely thorough. Look at the United States. It's a melting pot. People intermarry all the different races of the world. It's not about having RH negative blood. It's not about blue bloods. Yes, there are proclivities. There are tendencies that make them more attractive but you know, to abduction cases. But that has nothing to do with being saved by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. We're talking about God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You can be saved by the blood of the Lamb. It has nothing to do with blood types. It has, we've all been infiltrated. That's why I read those scriptures to you to help you understand in Genesis twenty-four thirty-seven that back then, when they were protecting the bloodline of Jesus, 
It was critical that they didn't intermarry. But today, it's water under the bridge, folks. We all need to be washed white with the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. We all need to take advantage of becoming born again. Praise God. Praise Jesus. It's very exciting. Very exciting. Zen? Yeah, um, there was a question in the chat room uh, speaking about, um, you know, us as far as our first estate and why we are on this planet and in a fallen form and, in you know, surrounded by devils and demons because this is where Satan rules. He's been given temporary reign. And, and the reason why we're all here, again, is to prove our allegiance, to decide with choice with our decisions, with the things that we do, our thoughts and our behaviors, the way that uh, we choose to be watchmen and also foot watchers, we are determining our allegiance again, that we're proving our worthiness and our, our we're doing service again to the Father and to the Son. And they, you know, one of the questions was, who were we? Were we the ones that rebelled were we the ones that uh fought with michael were we the ones that just did nothing that chose to just watch and who were just uh confused as to which way to go the people that are incarnated into flesh form are from all three classes there are some that are of the elect uh, that are here that are doing the work um that are just like as they did in the the first world age, they are fighting alongside Michael and serving the Morning Star administration. They're awakening people to their own remembrance. They're embracing their own remembrance, and they're assuming that responsibility of doing the work, of sounding the alarm, of putting themselves at risk without second thought. You know, to to do the work of the kingdom to bring other people to recognition and to remembrance so that they can have a choice in in the same thing, in, in serving and in, in taking part in extending their hand out to the grace that Christ extended to all of us in giving us a chance for salvation and a return to our first estate. That's why all of us are here in flesh now. Um, it's because we... You know, whatever it was that we did during the first world age, uh, n none of us, some have partial memory, but none of us have certain clear memory as to exactly what all those things were. I'm sure that at some point that, you know, the memories are burned to, to our soul and that at some point we will be awakened to the fullness of all that and it will be a glorious thing. To, to come to remembrance on the fullness of all that, and I'm sure that we'll you know we'll be talking about those stories in heaven and uh, talking about the fullness of our journey from the first world age to the second world age. But right now we have drank from the cup of forgetfulness. We have had our memories wiped clean. We were tabula rasa when we came into the flesh, and so we are trying to gain the remembrance of those things so that we can understand why it is that we're here in the flesh now and and so that we can choose to serve the Father and the Son again and align ourselves in allegiance to them because Christ warned us, you know, there are going to be those that are going to be so comfortable with the with the pleasures of living and just uh, you know, in not wanting to make a choice one way or the other, that is going to be the same as those that were in the middle ground during the first world age. You know that, and this was the majority of the people that are incarnating to the flesh now. It's why most people are, you know, having to take on embodiment to come into the flesh again, is because they made no decision one way or the other, and here. Is, here it is that even in the flesh they are doing the same thing, they're comfortable in their in their lives. Um, they're okay with the the pleasures and distractions of this, of this world, and again they are making no choice to serve the Father or to serve Satan. You know these are the the people that are lukewarm. 
there are those that are of the rebellious ones, the usurpers. They are the line of Cain. They are the Illuminati elect that know they serve their father, the devil, and they know that they are of the line of Cain. They give their allegiance completely to the fallen ones. And for those that are of the elect that have woken up to to the kingdom and that have given priority to servicing the kingdom and to living in that way, to bearing the cross and to taking on all that that entails, they know that they are the elect and that they are serving the Father and the Son with their every breath. Their whole desire for being here in the flesh is to do service to the kingdom and to be the watchman that sounds the trumpet even at the risk of their own lives. And there are so many of those. It, it is still a small remnant compared to the collective whole, but there are many, many that are waking up to that responsibility and that are willing to put themselves at risk, that are willing to put the father and the son ahead of family, ahead of their spouses, ahead of their children, ahead of their mothers and daughters and brothers and sisters. Because when we come to discernment on so many of these crazy-sounding things and we try to share them with others, so many of our family members turn their backs on us, think of us as being the the crazy ones or completely, you know, having lost it and jumped off the deep end. But and, – and I know that when we wake up, the one of the things that we wish more than anything is to be able to share this information with our loved ones because – we want our loved ones to have part in salvation. We want them to be in heaven with us. And, you know, so many, there's not many at all that are walking the narrow way in truth to where they have been brought to discernment by the Father and the Son on the critical nature of all these things. Most people care not anything about the truth. They And when they do discover even small amounts of it, it scares them to such a degree that they no longer want to investigate it or look into it. And they want to remain complacent in their, you know, in, in, their, uh, in their pleasures and in their uh, comfortableness. And so many of those are the Laodicean church, and we know what Christ said about that. He said he was going to spew these people out of their mouths because they, they again, made no choice to serve him. Oh, amen. So well said. Praise God. Folks, again, tribulation-now.net, if you can, get out there and grab a, a copy of the show notes. We have at least 10, 15 pages of material, uh, ancient text that refers to the shape-shifting reptilians, these fallen seraphim entities. Uh, it's the real deal, folks. Um, I, I wish we had more time, but we don't. I want to go ahead and close the show with the Holy Watcher concept. This is kind of exciting. In Daniel 4, verse 13, it says, I saw visions in my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher a holy one coming down from heaven. So who were the sons of God who came down un into the daughters of men and bore Nephilim? Well, they were sons of God. They were holy watchers before they committed the crime. Let's take a listen to Gary Stearman from Prophecy in the News. Let's listen to his testimony and what he thinks these beings might be. Hello and welcome to Prophecy in the News. I'm Gary Stearman and today we're going to talk about UFOs, specifically the question. And it's expressed right here on the cover of the August 2011 Prophecy in the News magazine. What does the Bible say about UFOs? <clears throat> now, it was a summer day <laughs> to begin this story. Uh, on a, uh, a Saturday, we had loaded a Cessna 207 with about a ton of materials to go to two different aircraft dealerships. These materials were point-of-sale materials. They were sales training materials that we had developed. And our custom at Cessna was to fly them out to the field so that people could use them. And uh, I was happy until, boom, out of nowhere, I, I got an electrical warning. 
light flashes, all the gauges drop, and I, I checked everything out and discovered I had no electrical power. I'm sure I'll make it to Lubbock. And, Bob, that is when it happened. <clears throat> looked like it was maybe a mile away, and it was flying my speed and direction right along beside me. And so I dismissed it as a T-41, Bob, until we flew under an overhead cloud bank and it got dark. Well, we both flew under a dark cloud, and he continued to be as bright as he was when we were out in the sun. And I thought, wow, that, that, is, that is a UFO after all. And the instant I had that thought, this thing came right over next to me. It covered about a mile in two seconds. It went swoosh right over next to me. And it was flying along in formation with me about mm, 100 feet off my left wing. It was a circular, uh, beautiful, shiny, aluminum-looking thing, about 100 feet in diameter, about 15 feet thick. And it was practically within touching distance. Looking back on this event, it led to the way I view the Bible. It, it, it led to me under, being clearly clearly understanding in the sense that there are real vehicles flying through a real sky and that they are uh, tough enough, hard enough that you can reach out and hit them with your knuckles if you want to. I mean, we're talking about a real machine here, and knowing that a real machine could come out of nowhere and materialize beside you and, and go through all the machinations that this thing did changed the way I think about the world. Why should that surprise us, Gary? It's throughout the pages of the Bible. It is. We go into the stories in the Bible where their craft, their celestial craft, their, the throne of the Lord on wheels came sure. down to meet Ezekiel. And there, there are literally dozens of stories about the Hebrew prophets and how they yeah. saw the future. You lost over four hours of time. Basically. I lost o over four hours of time. And I, uh, it, to me, it was just as though in the end time had been speeded up. The next day I uh, came back and discovered four mechanics and an FAA inspector examining the airplane, and, and the, the chief mechanic ran up to me and he said, you ain't going to believe what's happened to your airplane. And, and long story short, the drive belt for the, uh, the power charging system had just simply dropped to the bottom of the cowl, which was utterly impossible. But it caused me to ask questions, Bob, a lot of questions. Was this a good encounter or was it a, an evil encounter? Was this an angel or was it a demon? Uh, was was I taken through time somehow or was was my perspective altered? Uh, was this a rescue effort? Had my airplane developed problems that, that needed some sort of, of uh, intervention? I, I think don't it's know. pretty obvious. Uh, it was obvious to me from the first time you told me the story, even though you weren't saved at the time. I mean, we have a God who knows the future. And he <laughs> knew there was going to come a time where you were going to accept Jesus as your Savior. And you were going to alter your pathway in life from a corporate executive with, with uh, an airline company to the host of prophecy in the news one day. So I think it was an angelic presence that protected you. Praise Jesus in the book written by John W. Myler, entitled Aliens in the Antichrist. He postulates and with incredible, unbelievable uh, uh, accuracy and Bible scripture supporting it, that the angels of our Heavenly Father protect themselves from the elements of outer space and in... You can call it a chariot if you want to, a technology. Again, Kat Kerr, in her testimony of being to heaven, was taken in a technology. Uh, the Re Reverend Jesse Duplantis, when he was taken to heaven, was taken in some type of a vehicle by the angel that he called, for lack of a better term, a chariot. Praise Jesus. Why wouldn't the angels of God also use them for other purposes? This was G Brother Gary Stearman, uh, one of the leaders of Prophecy in the News. Praise Jesus. And this is also covered by L.A. Marzulli in the uh, Watchers DVD version 5, Watchers 5, praise God. Uh, Zen, you want to wrap up the show, brother? Yeah, I just want to let everybody here know how much I appreciate them and thank you for praying for all of us and know that it's our honor to, to serve you in whatever capacity that we can to serve the kingdom, to serve our king and our lord 
to help you to come to remembrance on who you are, why you're here, what all of this is about. Some of us have been yearning for the larger secrets, have wanted to know about these things all of our lives. And for us to have the fellowship, to be able to share these things with you, it's such a blessing for all of us because I know that like myself, many of you have walked this road in loneliness for a long time and have had nobody to speak to about any of these things. And it's through dialogue and through conversation and through fellowship such as we are having this evening that we're able to learn from each other. And all of us are students for life. We're all here together. None of us has all of the answers. And we need each other to come to full discernment on all of the secrets that the Father wants us to know for this day and age. Amen. Praise God. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to spend together, for this opportunity to, have, to be together in an electronic ecclesia, a global ecclesia, where we can share the exciting mysteries of the Bible, understand who we are and why we're here. And Father, help to enable us, give us the knowledge that we need through the Holy Spirit to be able to use this information, to refer people to it, to witness to people, to talk about these things, to lead them to the way the truth and the life, our King Yeshua, Jesus Christ, for no one gets unto the Father but through Him. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you, Brother Zen.